crafty friends and DV besties. I'm Laura and welcome back to the Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon so you don't miss a thing. And I am very excited for what we're gonna be doing today because we are making paper lanterns specifically lotus flower paper lanterns. And we know this is gonna be a good file. You always know it's gonna be good when it comes with instructions. So I found this file on Design Bundles. So it's the Lantern Lotus Flower by 3D Studio Elephant. And I am excited to make this. She recommends putting a tea light inside or like a battery powered tea light to make like a cool effect. So I think this would be really cool for parties. I think this would be really cool for just seasonal decor. I'm really excited to try it out. So without further ado, let's dive right into the materials you're gonna need for this project. Okay, so first and foremost, you are going to need your design file. So again, this one's from Design Bundles and it is the Lantern Lotus Flower. It comes with directions. I would highly recommend just going ahead and printing those directions off like I've done here. I already kind of gave them a little sneak peek and I think the assembly is gonna make, have us looking back at our picture over and over again. So go ahead and have that printed out. Go ahead and put your file into Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio or whatever cutting machine you're working with today. But then other than that, you're gonna need a light grip Cricut mat, card stock of any color you prefer. I chose this pastel kit that I'm really excited to jump into. And then glue or double-sided tape of some kind to hold your lantern together when we assemble it. I found this double-sided foam tape, so we're gonna be trying this out today, seeing if it does a good job. And you're also probably gonna want a pair of scissors in case we need to do some trimming. As for machine, I'm gonna be using my Cricut Joy Extra today. And that's one of the things I actually love about this file. It actually comes with two options for the file. So it has an option to cut it on a larger cutting mat if you cut with your Cricut Maker or your Cricut Explorer. And then also comes with an alternate setup if you want to cut on a Cricut Joy or a Cricut Joy Extra. Today, I'm gonna be cutting on my Cricut Joy Extra. I wanted to do the more complicated assembly because I wanted to be able to walk you through each and every step. But if you do have a larger cutting machine, you can cut with the larger style that she has included and it will require less steps for the assembly part of this. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the Cricut Design Space portion. So as you can see, I have the more complicated file in my Cricut Design Space right now. I'm gonna zoom out so you can kind of see the whole thing here. You can see that the individual pieces are really small and that's because I'm cutting mine on the Cricut Joy Extra. I'll go ahead and show you really quickly what the other one looks like so that you can see it. So if we were to be cutting this on the regular sized Cricut or this regular size silhouette, this would be what our cut pieces look like. And this does require a 12 inch wide cutting mat, but you do get to have your pieces cut and already assembled like a little more completely. But we are not gonna be doing that today. We're gonna be challenging ourselves with the smaller cuts here and doing it piece by piece so that you can know that you could do this project on Cricut Joy or on the Cricut Joy Extra. Luckily, when I get my files from Design Bundles, I don't have to do any setup or anything extra. It's already ready to go so I'm just gonna go ahead and click make it and I am gonna be cutting this on my joy extra you can see it grayed out up here in the corner we are gonna be cutting on the mat today the only reason why we would select without mat would be if we were cutting with matless materials like a matless vinyl or a matless heat transfer vinyl but we are using cardstock today so we're gonna be cutting on our Cricut mat and then we do not need to mirror because that would be if we were using heat transfer vinyl or something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and click continue you can see my Joy Extra is gonna connect via Bluetooth. I'm gonna go ahead and select heavy cardstock and I'm gonna to select to remember material settings because you can see we're cutting several mats here and all of them will be with cardstock. So we're gonna use our same material settings for each of these cuts. Okay, we're gonna jump back into real life now and get our mat set up and get ready to cut each of these layers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set my instructions and my foam tape off to the side and we're gonna select our color we're gonna use. Okay, I do like this blue color a lot. I like the purple. I think we're gonna use this purpley color here and I think we're doing seven layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and set aside seven pieces here. Now we are going to take the cover off of our mat 
We are just going to place our cardstock in the upper left hand corner here and smooth it down. Luckily, we don't have to be worried too much about things peeling or pulling today because cardstock is super easy to work with, which is why when people are first getting into Cricut, sometimes I point them in the direction of paper crafts because I think that it's a little bit easier to work with and there's no weeding involved. So this part is super easy. What is going to try our patience is gonna be the assembly, I fear, but we'll figure that out in a minute. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that when we have to get to that. Let's go ahead and load this into the Cricut. Let's let all of our layers cut and then we'll come back together for assembly. Okay, so we've got our design loaded in and I just hit go over here on my computer. And so now we're just gonna let the Cricut Joy Extra do her thing. And we're gonna cut all seven of these mats in quick succession here. And then we will jump back to the table to do the assembly. Okay, our first mat is done cutting. I do wanna show you really quickly how to remove cardstock from the mat. So all you're gonna do is just pull up the excess, super easy. You can see it just peels right off. And then we're just gonna take our individual pieces and kind of bend the mat away from the cardstock and let the cardstock fall off. So as you can see, I'm just bending my mat a little bit away, letting the cardstock peel up a little bit and then just pulling it directly off. What we don't wanna do is bend our cardstock a ton, but you shouldn't have to with a light grip mat. You should be able to just kind of peel the mat back a little bit and then lift your cardstock up and away. Now we have all of our pieces for the first one and we're ready to lay down our second layer. So I'm just gonna take my second piece, put it here in the upper left-hand corner, and we're now gonna repeat that process six more times and finish all seven layers here before we're ready to assemble. Okay, crafty friends, we're back. I'm gonna get me some scissors here. We have now cut every layer. And I do wanna take a quick moment just to kind of explain all the different pieces because I did a little bit of digging into how this file is set up and that's the only reason I feel like I now understand it. But I wanna make sure it's clear to you because these pieces here are different from each other. And basically the way this works, these are gonna be your petals, these pieces that kind of look like the golden snitch. And then these pieces are your bases and each petal shape corresponds to one of these base pieces. So let's make sure we have everything aligned first and that you have all of your pieces and then we're gonna start assembling. So you've got a small base and it should have three little petal pieces that look like this shape. You can see this is kind of like our medium size here and it has three and you know that it has three because it has three points. So three points, three petals. Then you have your middle base here and it has one, two, three, four, five points. So it's gonna have five petals. I guess these are our narrowest, these are our mediums and there are five. And then these are our large ones and they have one, two, three, four, five as well. Five points, five petals, or five golden snitches. And these are our widest ones. Five of these, five of these, three of these. Get everything aligned how you want them and now we're going to start assembling. So we're gonna refer to our instructions here as we go along. First thing it wants us to do is bend the details of the petals along the fold lines. So I'm just going to do my smallest one here first. You can see we have these little fold lines down here at the tips of our petals and all we're gonna do is just fold them up. So you can choose to do this as you go one at a time or you can go through and do all your folding now. I'm just gonna do it for my smallest layer here. And then it's gonna tell us on step three that there are three base pieces for the three layers of petals. We already know this and we've already aligned ours and matched them up how they're supposed to be. But then all we're basically gonna do is the part that we just folded is going to glue underneath one side of the point. So you can tell that it actually fits perfectly and that's how you know you've matched your petal with the correct base. Because when I slide this under, watch I'm gonna do it really slowly, when I slide this under one side of a point, that angle aligns perfectly and the little end of my petal aligns perfectly with this little rounded part. So when I'm ready to flip it up, everything underneath is gonna be hidden. That's how you know you've picked the right one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with our first piece here. I'm using these little foam adhesive things. So I'm gonna cut a tiny little strip, two tiny little strips actually. We're gonna see if this works for this <laughs> product. I'm not 100% sure about that, but we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna stick my little foam piece right here and then I'm going to align it and press down. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side here. Again, this is all gonna make sense a lot more once we do one. Sticking my little foam piece on top here because we're gonna be sliding it underneath. Gonna slide it under, if I could do it with while also showing it to you. Slide it under, making sure I line it up and then kind of just pressing it down. And then we end up with one petal. So if you look at the underside here, you can see how everything is lined up. And we're just gonna repeat that two more times. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my little foam pieces. So I'm gonna need four more. One, two, three, four. Eee! We're gonna get our next piece glued here. We'll get our glue dots down. Okay, let's get all of our little glue pieces on here. So not gonna worry about attaching right now, just gonna get everything ready to attach. And then we're gonna attach our other two pieces. And then we'll already be done with our bottom layer, which is really exciting. If I had to go back to kindergarten, I think I might fail like gluing and cutting, <laughs> which is pretty sad for a crafter. That's why I always look for these little glue hacks, like these little glue foam glue dots and stuff. So I don't have to worry about gluing from a tube or even a glue stick. Cause I just find that no matter how attentive I am, no matter how patient I am, I still end up with glue everywhere. So far, I love these little things. Okay, the third one's gonna be the hardest one because you have to like really slide it in there and it's getting kind of crowded. But just remember, everything should line up perfectly and then you just kind of press it down. So there we go. That is our innermost layer done. You can see we have this little guy here. And now we're gonna move on to the next layer. And this is really easy because we're just repeating exactly what we've already done. So all I'm gonna do first is go in and bend all of my pieces here. And I'm just gonna continue doing this one layer at a time. I'm not gonna try to do it all at once. Bending along the fold lines. Very convenient that she has these included. We love when a file does that. Okay, and now I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 little glue dots here. But I'm not gonna try to do all 10 at once. I have learned my lesson <laughs> from the last ones. So I'm just gonna do two at a time here. Putting my little glue dots on. And then this one is shaped a little bit differently, but the concept is still exactly the same. We are just going to line up our diagonal line and then know that this little jutting out part here is gonna match the edge of this little like pentagon shape. We're just going to slide it in there. It does align perfectly, so we know we are using the right petals with the right base. And we're gonna grab the other side and do the same. And this one should be sticking out a little farther than the other because remember, this is like the next layer out of our lotus flower. If you have stuck with me this far, you are a DB bestie for sure. You are a crafty queen. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon. We don't want you to miss any of the crafty tutorials we have coming up. And if you have something you already know you wanna learn about or something you want me to make, let me know in the comments. I would love to make it. I'm always looking for new ideas, new things to try. I actually used to not be really a paper crafter at all. And it was doing videos like this that kind of got me into it because you hit a point where you just wanna try new things. And I definitely hit that point, which is why I'm doing paper crafts now. And I think they're so fun. That is one thing I love about the crafting community is we're always inspiring each other to try new things. It's always good to kind of open up our creative repertoire and do something a little bit new and out of our comfort zones. And for me, that is paper crafts. <laughs> we're on our third petal now, continuing to do exactly what we've done the whole time, just lining it up, getting those petals stuck on there. And if you are using glue or a glue stick and it is getting kind of messy at this point, remember that it's really not the end of the world with this project because the part that you're gluing is not gonna be the visible part. You're gluing underneath the flower. So you don't have to stress about that too terribly much because most of it should be hidden underneath. The foam glue pieces are coming in clutch right about now. All right, last piece. Always the most challenging one is the last one because everything gets really crowded in there. All right, second layer, done. We're gonna set it off to the side, continue on to our third layer here. Same thing as before. This time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna try to get all my glue pieces pulled out here so I'm not like constantly reaching for them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and lay the glue piece down before I even bend. And then I'm just gonna pull the top part off, bend it and stick it on. We're gonna see if that's a little bit easier. I love that I'm waiting until the very last layer to try this, but I just thought about how that may make things a little bit easier.
Alrighty, let's start. Same thing as before, little different shape this time and you can tell our petals are also a little bit of a different shape. We have that sharper angle here towards the edge of our petal right here and that should line up with these little triangles. Let's line it all up. The little lines where you stick it do not really become evident unless you actually do the folding bit. So don't skip out on that part. I'm gonna go ahead and do the folding and then I'm gonna peel off my little protective top part here. I bet that's gonna make it a lot easier to see. Especially on this final layer, it was a little harder to tell where to line it up, but then once I folded it, it was a lot more obvious. And everything, of course, lined up perfectly when I did it the right way. So let's not try to skip any steps from here on out. Folding, peeling off that top layer. This is actually a very satisfying process. <laughs> okay, working our way along, folding, peeling, last one. And then we get to actually assemble this guy. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, ta-da, we have all three of our little pieces here now. Now let's see, it's saying next. Glue the pieces together so that the circle and triangle marks in the center of each base match up. Okay, we're gonna need just a couple more pieces of our glue here, or tape, I guess, in my case. I'm gonna use these big pieces because I'm not trying for this to come undone, you know? Okay, we're gonna start with our smallest piece, just laying a piece of tape down and then making sure that our triangle and our circle match up. So I'm gonna align it here and then press down. And then the same thing with our middle layer to our bottom layer. I'm just gonna flip it over, place my tape down, and then line up the triangle and the circle from the center, press down. Okay, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, here's how it turned out. I am obsessed with it. It's so like princess inspired, look at it. Okay, that wasn't hard. We did that. This is a very good beginner paper craft, especially if you use the little double-sided tape pieces. That made assembly so much easier. You could make a ton of these and like line a walkway at a party, put these on the stairs for seasonal decoration, put these on your mantle, put them in a kid's room, put a little battery powered tea light inside. Not a real one, it's made of paper. These are a win. These are a 10 out of 10. Love how they turned out. I'm gonna put a tea light in mine. So. Cute. Simple project, simple materials, cut it on any cutting machine. I hope you love this project as much as I clearly do. I love how this turned out. Definitely like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all the things. We would love to see you back here next time when we do more crafty tutorials. Comment below what you wanna see me make next, what you wanna learn about. I would love to make it with you. Also, I am Laura. You can find me on social media at It's Laura Lambert anywhere that you do social media. Shoot me a DM, comment on my page. I would love to connect with you personally. I do more crafty tutorials over there as well. I had so much fun with you and we will see you back here next week, DB Besties, but until then, Happy crafting.